is Claudia. The 18 story Saturn I stands on its pad at Cape Kennedy, poised to send Pegasus II into orbit. The world's most powerful rocket lights up the landscape as it generates its million and a half pounds of thrust. The Pegasus II follows a twin into orbit. Pegasus I and II are measuring the density of meteoroids. This is important data to have collated before we send our astronauts far out into space, much further than the current project, Gemini 1. Animation shows how the Pegasus goes through its paces once the hydrogen-powered second stage puts it into orbit, an orbit ranging from 316 to 460 miles high. When the satellite is comfortably in place, it goes into action on its own to thrust out wing-like panels to a span of 96 feet. These will measure the damage tiny meteoroids might cause as they hit a spacecraft with sandblast effect while they speed through the reaches of outer space. President Charles de Gaulle makes a five-day tour of France through four departments, and he makes it under stringent security provisions. Ever since he assumed power, de Gaulle has walked in the shadow of assassins. The extremist groups that railed against the settlement in Algeria have stalked de Gaulle since he was elected president in 1958. As this tour was drawing to a close, 11 extremists were rounded up by his security forces, including two high police officers responsible for his safety. De Gaulle shrugs off these attempts on his life with Gallic fatalism, though he does take the precaution of surrounding himself with bodyguards. 4,000 men were on duty during his short tour. At Saint-Gilles, he finds time to greet the fishermen just like an old-time campaigner. This is not supposed to be a political trip, but de Gaulle faces a coming election, and it pays to get around a bit. Homage is paid to the legendary Georges Clemenceau as saint Hermine. The tiger, as it was called, is a de Gaulle hero. In a score of speeches he made during the five days, de Gaulle unfailingly attacked the world leadership of the U.S. and the Soviet Union in the West and the East. He wants France in the foreground as the power in Europe. The 75-year-old de Gaulle has not yet announced his candidacy for re-election with a coyness that hardly befits his years. However, if he fails to run, it would be like a Frenchman giving up his beloved wine for soda pop. Impossible. Some added punch for Uncle Sam in South Vietnam. At Bayonne, New Jersey, four 82-foot Coast Guard cutters are loaded aboard a cargo ship to sail for duty against the communist Viet Cong. The 63-ton vessels will be used for coastal and river operations in the areas of South Vietnam, where the North Vietnamese have been smuggling arms to the Viet Cong. Speedy and maneuverable, the cutters have been refitted and their armaments increased. They will form a barrier along the coast to prevent the landing of Chinese arms in remote coves and isolated beaches. They will be the new policemen on the beach. Once the helicopter was looked upon as a slow but reliable workhorse. No more. At Oxnard, California, they unveiled new refinements on the Army Lockheed XH-51A. The craft goes aloft with test pilot Donald Segner at the controls for this first public demonstration. In one recent flight, the same pilot flew the chopper at an incredible 272 miles an hour. Today, he sort of loafs. In a couple of zooming runs, Segner sends the copter along at a mere 240 miles an hour. It's the beginning of another new era in aviation. The Chelsea Flower Show on the grounds of the Royal Hospital in London is the largest in the world, they say. And each year, it is a monument to man's ability to predict nature. The Horticultural Society managed to have the blooms at their loveliest, no matter the weather, for visitors like Princess Margaret. Queen Elizabeth was in Germany during the exhibit, so it became Margaret's privilege to make this into a royal bower.
The Queen Mother is also an attentive viewer of all this beauty. Three and a half acres of blooms right in the heart of London. The beauty of the flowers is almost enough to discourage the amateur gardener, but he goes home determined to do as well in his own backyard. To paraphrase those two incomparable English balladeers, the flowers that bloom in the spring, fella, have plenty to do with the case. <laughs> 